Welcome back to the channel, everybody. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm the Nerdy Kilt, and let's talk about this right here. <laughs> that is how he likes to lay sometimes. <laughs> uh, no, in all actuality, I want to talk about science and becoming a scientist. So let's get into it. Uh, okay. So the Oxford Dictionary defines scientist as anybody who has expert knowledge in or is studying a particular uh, natural or physical science. So what that means is it's a very base definition of what science, what being a scientist is. Uh, it, it's very loose, you know, uh, anybody studying the sciences currently in college is considered a scientist by that definition. But that might not be a good definition for somebody who actually practices science regularly, maybe working at a national lab or at a, at a school. So what does it mean to be a scientist? Um, that's a good question. It's really hard to actually answer that. Um, if you feel like throwing out your definition, go ahead and throw it in the comments uh, because I don't really know, I don't really have a good definition of what take what it takes to be a scientist specifically um i mean as long as you're studying and you're doing research and you're learning about something you are technically performing the role of of a scientist um maybe in a more laid-back manner than what some people would define but i would argue that anybody that's willing to learn is already being a scientist but let's talk about the more specific case where you're trying to do science for a living and you're trying to do it as a job so why would people do that why what kind of person wants that that job what kind of person wants to be in science well that's that's basically anybody who's curious about how things work uh, what's going on on the inside of things if one of your hobbies is taking things apart and seeing what goes on on the inside of that or what goes on what are the parts of a phone or anything like that that's probably somebody that would be interested in doing science other other things um, that might be interesting for people is just learning how how people interact. So more of a social science. Uh, science is a very broad term, and it covers basically any amount or any kind of learning that anyone can do. So basically, yeah, you can have people that are just interested in learning a subject that really want to dig into it, or there's just general natural curiosity um, those are the types of people that might be interested in a career so let's say you want to become you've decided that you want to maybe investigate what it takes to become a scientist some of the things that you want to take into consideration are what kind of what are you what are you interested in what fields you might like to learn about there are a lot of different things that you can do at, with science so you have to kind of narrow down and pick out something specific for you, yourself and the best way to do that is just look up particular topics maybe when you're taking classes try to see if you cling to anything in particular is there something in your science courses that made you excited is there something in your history or social science courses that you know sort of get you excited i guess um if those are if there's something like that that would be a good place to start just looking into the, the things that you're interested in and especially consulting other people in those fields you might um, you might know somebody who's especially for your classes if you know somebody who's teaching the course they're generally going to be a good resource at least be able to point you in the right direction for other topics that you may or may not be interested in so with that being said, checking in with your professors or your teachers, depending on where you're at, um, that would be a good place to start learning about what fields you're actually interested in. It can be tricky to pick something um, without knowing the details. So make sure that when you're trying to choose, you know the details. My, I myself, um, kind of fell into a bad habit of not researching things ahead of time. So I never really knew exactly what I wanted. I had a general idea, but I was just like, you know, as long as I go off in this direction, I'd be happy. Um, 
but I never really chose which direction to go, you know, before that. So it made it a little trickier for me to actually pick what I wanted to study because I never really did all the research ahead of time. So being prepared and knowing a little bit about and investigating what you're interested in is a good place to start. On top of that, you kind of, when, when you decide what, you, what you're interested in, you want to put as much time into studying that as possible. And you don't have to start, you know, next year, whenever you feel like, oh, well, I'm not a, I'm not a upperclassman yet. One of the common questions asked is, do I have to be an upperclassman to start doing research? And the answer to that question is no. I knew um, I was doing an internship over in the University of Maryland, and there was a high school student working in the same lab as me, and I was uh, going into my junior year of college. So no, you can start whenever you want. You just really have to look for those opportunities. Um, I did another video last maybe a couple days back where I explained a little bit about how you can find research opportunities. It's gen generally you just keep looking for them and you, dev you don't really stop until you get one um, if you're interested in doing research and you're interested in doing a scientific career. So start soon um, and it's okay if you, if you don't know if you're starting a bit late and you're, you think maybe you're, you'd be interested in science or you'd be interested in doing some kind of research down the road. Um, if, you're just, if you're just starting off, don't feel like now is too late too. It's never, it's never too late, but it's better to do it early. Um, there, at there, there is a certain point where you want to be sure that you're interested in science. For some people, it turns out that they're not fully they're not as interested as they thought, and that's okay too, but it does make it a little bit trickier to, to plan. So if you're not certain, it's gonna be a bit harder to plan in the future. So one more thing that you could do that you wanna keep in mind when you're interested in a field in science is that you want to get at least a basic understanding of your mathematics. That is a huge part, plays a big role in a lot of different scientific fields. But the earlier you start your math and understanding it, the, the better that the your, the better your chances at enjoying the science will be. Because having a good understanding of the mathematics and statistics is gonna give you a much better understanding of your research when you get to the results. And it's gonna give you a better understanding of how to talk with people about your results. So some of the advice that I would give for becoming a scientist or doing research here is obviously looking for research opportunities, uh, picking your field, picking what you would like to study, uh, doing research in that field, and also along the way through all of that, getting an, a basic understanding of your mathematics and building off of that when you need it. Um, it's a very important and it's not always talked about for certain fields that the math needs to be there but it is important to know that that's something that you should look forward to or maybe not everybody looks forward to math but it's something that you should be prepared for so with all that being said that's really all i have for you today so if you're still here you might give me a like and a subscribe I'm going to continue to make videos like this and hopefully if you're if you've made it to the end you'd be interested in the future videos that I'll be making. So <laughs> it's just kind of a natural thing to do. So thanks for sticking it out. See ya.